Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the talk show and podcast where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, music, sports, everything really. Depending on the guest, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Pierre Miotis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. My guest is an actor who stars in a film that will be coming out February 19th. It is called The Sinners and we're with Caitlin Bernard. Caitlin, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's exciting. I mean, the movie is almost like, I mean, you guys made this movie about a year ago. You know, there were some mm-hmm. film festivals and everything, but people, mm-hmm. like a wide a variety of people are now are going to be able to see it. How exciting is it for you and the cast and crew? It's awesome. And, you know, I've had so many people, so many of my friends and family asking me, when's it coming out? When's it coming out? And it's really great because it's going to be on um, Amazon and Apple. So anyone can kind of watch it and see it. Um, so, yeah, super exciting time. Is it one of those things? Is it kind because of, you you guys? So I believe because I also talked to Kaylani as well, who's in the mm-hmm. film. You guys shot this quite a bit, a, quite some time ago, right? Yeah. So I believe we shot in May 2019. Okay. Um. So yeah, it's it's been a little bit of um yeah a little bit of time since we last shot it, and it's always super exciting to kind of see. I mean, I saw the finished product in Mammoth, um, but I haven't seen it in a while, so I'm excited to rent it and yeah watch it with um some family. Because I find it interesting where you know people make. So a movie comes out and sometimes you kind of don't know the backstory in terms of when exactly it was shot, right? Because people, mm-hmm. I feel like there's this kind of misconception that it's like this movie's out, but, you know, they didn't film it like two months ago. You know what I mean? They filmed it yeah. like a couple of years back, right? Is it, is, it's almost like a resurfacing a little bit too, right? Because you did the film festival circuit and it's a movie mm-hmm. you did last year. And now, boom, you know, press week and you're getting it out there and everything. Is it a little strange sometimes where it's kind of like in flows of like the promotion and talking about movies like that, do you find? Um, yes and no. I think like once you film a movie, it has, especially this one, that had such a huge impact on me as an actor because I worked with um, a lot of really amazing Canadian talent that I knew previously or I got to know. Um, so I think, yeah, like from an interview perspective when I'm doing press, um, I like to rewatch some of the the scenes and some of the stuff just so I remember and, and yeah, remind myself. But I think, yeah, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just excited for it to come out. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you are also not, I mean, this is a film. What I really like about this film is this film's kind of breaking kind of the barriers of like genres there's a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. going on in this film there's a lot of things you can categorize it as you know what i mean it's Mm -hmm. it's got the thriller aspect it's got the horror aspect it's got the crime there's a lot there's a lot kind of going on in it and it's not kind of Mm -hmm. keep staying in one box genre wise do you feel like that's kind of am i right when i say that that this film Mm -hmm. kind of explores different kind of genres draw it's a roller coaster film yeah, and I think something that's so cool about this film, too, is it, it's really different from that typical um, teen cult classic. Like, it definitely has yep. that theme to it. Um, but especially with the character that I play, Grace Carver, um, normally in films, they just show the popular girl, and they don't really show what's going on inside of her head or in yep. her life. Um, so with this, you actually get to see a full kind of perspective of what's going on at home, what's going on in her head um, and the things that she's dealing with. And, you know, Grace is just almost like the epitome of teenage emotion and rebellion. And there's a lot of things going on, um, including her questioning her sexuality and growing up in a, a really religious town with her father as the pastor. So I think in addition to um, it having a lot of different genres and underlying themes, I think that that is also a unique aspect to the film that you actually get to see that other side of the the popular girl at school. For sure. And it, it's one of those films, too, where your character, and I think you do a fantastic job in this, Caitlin, where, you know, there is... I don't want to get into spoilers or anything, but Mm -hmm. there's a lot of complex characters. There's a lot of kind of journeys in the film of, you know, 
what's the, what like you're kind of you you're kind of suspect you're you're suspicious of certain things and certain characters you know are introduced in a certain way and then it's just kind of like this back and forth of the, with their emotions and relationship with certain people mm-hmm. um when you kind of read a script that has these characters that are complex that are going through emotional mm-hmm. roller coasters and turning on people that you wouldn't expect that type of stuff what kind of goes mm-hmm. through your mind as a storyteller when you read a script with characters like this I mean, I, I love the complexity of ca- like the characters that are in, especially the sinners. Yep. Um, I think that it's cool too, because um, the movie does a really good job at showcasing each of those complexities and actually giving them the time on screen that they deserve and showing what's going on in each person's live life. Um, and for, yeah, for, for me personally, as an actor and as a storyteller, I love playing those roles where the character has a real arc throughout the um, the, the film and mm-hmm. with Grace, I mean, there's so much going on. She she doesn't want to play the villain and then she she ends up taking on that role and then she realizes that it's too late. I don't want to give anything away. Um, but it's her, yeah, there's just so, so much going on um, in her head and what's going on with her trying to figure out what's happened to her friends. Um, trying so hard not to say anything about it. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's tough. I, did, I did the interview with Kehlani <laughs> as well. And we're like, ah, like, what are we, what are we going to try to say? You know what I mean? Because... <laughs> Well, because there's so much that happens. and Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. No, people are going to be in for a treat. And one thing I kind of love about it, too, I said before we kind of started, is I'm Canadian, you're Canadian. This is mm-hmm. a Canadian film created by Canadians, starring a lot of Canadians. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Canada. I just want to say I'm really happy about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I think, yeah, as we were saying before, like it, the film really showcases um, BC and our beautiful Okanagan. And what's what's really unique about it too is that we we shot in Kelowna which is actually where Courtney Page grew up our director um so yeah and I think also just filming in a small town is so special because you really build um more intimate relationships with the cast and crew because you're all staying in a a small area you don't know anyone um so on your days off and um when you're on on the weekends you you just kind of like bond and you um find things to do and activities and there's so much to do in Kelowna so I feel like from that we also built a really special relationship and connection with um yeah the the cast and crew did oh for sure um and here's the thing too for people that have kind of followed your career and everything this is like you are no stranger to the horror slash thriller genre Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah I've done a lot of horror and thriller and um it's funny because I've gotten asked a lot whether or not I I like horror movies and I am such a scaredy cat. I do not like getting scared. Um, There's some really, really amazing horror films out there and I've seen them, but I'm, yeah, I'm I'm a fraidy cat. Um, And it's so funny because I do end up getting cast in a lot of horrors and thrillers and I just, yeah, I find it hilarious that I, I don't, that I'm so scared. But I mean, when you're like filming them behind the scenes, you see this big jug of blood being poured on the actors and you, you see what's going on behind the screen. But for some reason, I just can't like, when I'm watching specific horror films, I just can't separate that and realize yeah. that it's fake. It's just, yeah. It's interesting because you look at The Sinners and you look at another film you did called Spontaneous, which mm-hmm. I, you know, I enjoyed that film as well. Um, it's one of those things where you're doing kind of genre, like these genre bending movies and genre yeah. bending horror movies as well. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, spontaneous was so much fun. Um, yeah, I think, I think that with, like you said, with the sinners, there's just, yeah, there's so many different elements to it that I can't really pinpoint. It's not a horror. It's not necessarily just a thriller. Um, but it's more of like a murder mystery. I, I don't even know. It's got yeah, a lot, though. Sure. But I feel like why yeah. why do why do movies? It's the same thing with musicians too, Kayla. Like why mm-hmm. do we have to kind of like limit ourselves or just be like one mm-hmm. thing? You know what I mean? Where we have all these amazing creators out there. You saw firsthand yeah. with the people you work with that have all mm-hmm. these different ideas that can blend certain things. I mean, I don't see why we should be put in a box. If you know what I mean by that. I completely agree. I love the freedom um, that both of those films, and also I think it's inspiring too to other filmmakers to think outside of the box and to um, not just limit themselves to one particular genre because they assume that that's what sells, um, which isn't necessarily the case. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I totally agree with you. Absolutely. Um, 
I refer to you kind of as a storyteller, kind of going kind of earlier on. When did you kind of decide that acting and storytelling was something you wanted to do? Was there something, like, was there a certain movie or a TV show that kind of drew you towards the craft of acting? Like, how did that come to be for you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because so many actors have a, a story about watching a particular film and seeing a particular actor, and that's what made them want to become a storyteller. Um, for me, I honestly can't remember a time that I wasn't acting. When I was like four, I want to say, I was put into musical theater. Um, and then when I was 12, I started in film and TV and really found my passion there. So I think um, it really grew organically, and there wasn't like a particular time or moment that I was like okay yes this is what I want to do I just I've always been doing it and that's what I love and I just yeah I, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else oh absolutely getting back a little bit to the horror like the horror genre I mean mm -hmm. you know like I said you know the sinners is not necessarily just a horror movie but in my opinion it is a horror movie and you know we're mm -hmm. doing you're doing a lot of press um with you know a lot of the, these amazing you know horror like genre kind of publications because mm -hmm. I find the horror the horror community is incredible. Now you're no stranger to the horror movies like I kind of said with a lot of the films you worked on. Have you mm -hmm. noticed how amazing and dedicated the horror movie community is, Caitlin? Yeah, there's you know before um, I really got into doing thrillers and horror films, I, I had no idea. I mean, there's so many diehard horror fans that are so specific to that genre, which is unlike any other genre, at least in in what I've encountered. Um, but yeah, it's so cool to see. And so it's almost like a, like a huge community of people who just love, love, love that particular genre. And I think it's awesome. But I feel like this movie too, this movie plays around, we see it in the trailer as well. So it's not really a spoiler, but you know, this, this mm -hmm. movie plays around, like you said, with cults and religion mm -hmm. and witchcraft. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things and devil worship. There's a lot of things kind of going on, right? But mm -hmm. I feel like people are going to watch this movie. I mean, I feel like the reason why horror movies are so popular these days is because mm -hmm. we're finding different ways to scare people. Like, you don't just need, like, the, the jump scares and the gore. Like, yeah. people are scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely agree. And I think it's it's really refreshing too um because yeah a lot of it, it doesn't follow a, a specific like cliche or it doesn't follow a specific path that you expect um there's a lot of things that i think going back to what you said really twist and um mesh different genres and different things that you wouldn't necessarily expect and i think one of the things that originally drew me to the script was the seven deadly sins yes. aspect um and i thought that was so cool i had watched seven uh prior to reading the script and i love that movie so so much um it's a little more extreme than uh the sinners but yeah did you guys get to keep your masks unfortunately not i got that <laughs> i got asked that like a couple days ago and yeah no i have no idea where my rabbit mask is i wish i had it it's especially in yeah, masks, because it reminded me of like, I, I, well, you said you don't watch a lot of the horror movies, and this is probably one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. So the answer to this question, if you've seen The Strangers, it's probably no. Like, have you seen that movie? Yeah. I haven't, no. <laughs> and there's the masks, and it kind of like reminds me of the masks that you guys wear, but like masks just scare the crap out of me. Like that whole thing was just, yeah. <laughs> and those masks are yeah. so wicked that you guys get to wear that. Yeah, they're awesome. Well, it's funny because um, I did an interview with uh, Brenna Llewellyn, who plays um, Aubrey in The Sinners. And um, she was saying like, yeah, we need we definitely need our masks right now in, in, in 2021. So um, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have our masks, but I wish we did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, obviously, the obvious answer to this question is you hope people enjoy it, right? But mm -hmm. To get kind of to dive a little bit deeper, Caitlin, when people watch The Sinners, what are you hoping they get out of it? Like, what do you want people to kind of say or think after they watch a the movie? Besides just kind of enjoying it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of different messages within the film. Um, I think especially, I, I, I believe this movie will um, really appeal to teenage girls or just the teenage audience in general. So I think... There's a strong message about um, bullying and also about popularity and how it's not everything, yeah. um, which I think is really important for 
for young women to see um, because I know when I was younger, all I wanted was to be that popular girl that everyone, um, yeah, that everyone loved. So yeah, I think in addition to that too, I think it'll also um, create more awareness too about um, the LGBTQ plus community yep. and that in, in certain communities um, that, that's just not accepted, you know? And I think that's, that's a real struggle that um, Grace faces throughout the film. So um, yeah, there, there's so many different things. So I hope that one of those things the audience will take away from, from watching the film. Oh, absolutely. Well, Caitlin, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turner to talk about The Sinners. I really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> I mean, so the film's coming out February 19th, like you said, and they're going to be able to watch it. And uh, where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? So my Instagram is Caitlin J. Bernard. Um, I don't use a lot of other prop platforms, so that's probably the best one to follow me on. Perfect. Well, seriously, congrats <laughs> with the film. I really enjoyed it. I'm sure sh- uh, everyone's going to enjoy it and all the best with the release of the film as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, this has been Pop Turnin. If youtube.com slash Pop Turnin for previous episodes, you will be able to catch Caitlin Bernard in These Sinners coming out February 19th. Until next time, this is Caitlin Bernard and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnitive. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnitive on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnitive on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.